the circle means the circle various circle represents various states of a process and the arrow between circle represents the transition between state so in conclusion what we can say that what is state diagram state diagram is nothing but the set of states and transition between states okay so now let us discuss each state in detail so when we are talking about new state the, the first state is nothing but new state so new state is located into a secondary memory first that you need to keep in your mind and when process is about to create process is not yet created in that case that process or we can say program technically we can say that it is nothing but a program so program resides in secondary memory so when we are talking about new state it means process is not yet created it is about to create so new state is located into a secondary memory once the process is created that program would be shifted from the secondary memory to a main memory so it means what once process is created it will switch to a ready state now once it is uh, entered into a ready state and ready state is located into a main memory so definitely main memory has some uh, memory constraints means what it has you know limited memory as compared to secondary memory so we can accommodate some of the processes in the ready queue or case a ready state because of size issue so suppose if you want to uh, execute you know a thousand programs uh, in the cpu we cannot simultaneously do it we can uh, fetch some of the programs and put it into a ready queue for execution it is purely based on the availability of the resources according to the availability of resources we can fetch some of the programs from secondary memory to a main memory for execution so ready queue contains two of processes and they, that processes are ready for execution that is the reason why this state name is nothing but ready queue okay or it is a ready state it means whatever the number of processes we have in ready state they are ready for execution they are waiting for resources okay and the transition between ready state to ready running running state and running state to ready state so that is very important so first let us discuss the first transition between ready state to running state so in which uh, i have mentioned one caption in the transition scheduled slash dispatch what it means so when we have no pool of processes they are waiting for resources so out of those those processes okay one of the process will be picked by the scheduler by the scheduler Okay, according to which scheduling algorithm we have used, according to that scheduler will pick one of the process from the ready queue and and send it to the dispatcher. And what is the task of dispatcher? Dispatcher is nothing but one program which uh, send that pro selected process from the ready queue to running running state. Okay, and running state to ready uh, ready state. This is the task of your dispatcher. So dispatcher will do the transition from process transition from ready queue to running uh, state or running state to ready state. So the task of scheduler will simply pick the process and rest of the things means sending that process to a running state will be handled by the dispatcher. Now once uh, process is reside into a running state it means what it will start its execution in the cpu once it's completed its execution it will go to the terminated state so once it is terminated the context of that process or you can say process control block will be destroyed once the execution of that process is completed okay now uh, the fourth and if some if somebody asks you 
how many minimum number of states are required for process execution so in that case you can tell them there are four minimum number of your states are required which is nothing but new ready running and termination if everything is everything is happening smoothly only four states are required for process execution but in general case if you are talking about in general scenario the process uh, may require some IO devices for its execution like IO devices like if the process require printer print services ok so once it uh, reside in the running state if it requires after some, some time if it, if, if it requires you know, some print oriented services so that process will be shifted from running state to waiting state ok so whenever any IO operation IO device is required ok in that case the process will be shifted from running state to waiting state and it will be executed there and once it finishes its uh, IO operation it will again come back to the ready queue and uh, it will wait for you know later reception at running state ok so one thing you have to keep in your mind a new state is located into secondary memory, ready, running and waiting state is located into a main memory. So when we are talking about these three uh, states, definitely the one constant is there which is nothing but memory space. Okay. So once the IO operation and one thing you have to keep in your mind, there are two types of processes basically in operating system, one is CPU bound process and second one is IO bound process. So CPU bound process means what? A process which requires more time in CPU for its execution. So that type of process is, would be considered as CPU bound process and pro the process which requires more time on IO devices for its execution that type of process is nothing but IO bound processes. Okay. So if we have IO bound processes and if we have more and more number of IO bound processes and it will uh, send it to the waiting state so at a particular moment of time there are chances the waiting state is fully occupied by the uh, IO operations and if some other processes are requesting to get uh, the IO, IO uh, oriented services in that case uh, the memory is full so what we we'll, what we need to do is so for, so for that we need to have these two additional states which is nothing but suspend ready and suspend wait state so let us discuss this suspend ready and suspend wait so let us discuss suspend wait first in this case what can happen as I told you if any uh, IO request is uh, is there and if there is no space in waiting state in that case that uh, some of the processes will be shifted will be shifted from the waiting state to a suspend wait state suspend wait state uh, for its later execution and once the memory is uh, free or you can say if we have uh, some amount of memory after some time in that case we can shift it from the suspend wait to a it will, so that process will resume its execution once uh, once it is come back to the waiting state from uh, the suspend wait state. So these things you have to keep in your mind when uh, IO operation is required. So IO operation can be performed in the main memory as well as it can be performed in the secondary memory also. So once the process is shifted from waiting state to a suspend wait state. So it doesn't mean that it will stop its execution. No, it will continue its execution or it will continue its IO operation uh, even though it is resides in secondary memory. Means what? Even though it is it resides in suspended wait state. So it will uh, continue its execution. Same way in the case of suspend ready. So what will happen if any high priority process uh, come into the picture? Okay, in that case what will happen uh, if ready queue is full at that time so some of the process some, some list priority process will be shifted from uh, 
uh, ready queue to suspend ready uh, queue for a while and so that it can accommodate the highest priority process into the ready queue because ready queue is located into a main memory and that uh, that is one constraint is nothing but uh, memory space so that's why such type of you know additional uh, additional states are required so once it is suspended again it will resume its execution once the space is available in the ready queue okay uh, now what is the relationship between you know these two additional states that we have one is suspend ready and suspend wait so one transition between these two states so relationship between these two states is what as I told you in the case of suspend wait the process which uh, which in, in, uh, which is there in the suspend wait state it continues execution and once it finishes its execution means now that process is ready for execution in the CPU so that process needs to be shifted to a ready queue but we cannot directly reach to a ready queue yes so suspend uh, the completed operation of that process will be shifted from the suspend wait state to a suspend ready state and later on it will shift it to the ready queue for its execution one more thing you to keep in your mind the transition between running state to ready state running state to ready state in that I have mentioned one caption priority slash time quantum means when we are talking about multi programming operating system in which more than one program is a more than one processes are ready for execution in the CPU so there are chances if any high priority process if, if ongoing uh, execution is uh, there at running state of a particular process and if any high priority process uh, come into the picture so that process needs to be uh, executed anyhow in the CPU so what will happen in this case so process the ongoing process which resides in running queue should be forcefully printed from the running state to a ready state so how it will be done so ongoing process before going to switch from running state to ready state what it will do it will save its current state of information in the process control block and then it will shift it to the ready queue for later uh, execution so that uh, such, in such type of scenario, like if, if any high priority process came into the ex, uh, existence, in that case, uh, the preemption, multi, this is nothing but you know, multi programming with preemption is required. So process needs to be forcefully printed when any high priority process come into the existence, or if time flies or say time quantum is expired. In that case, it, it should. Uh, it needs to be shifted from the running state to a ready state. So this is all about you know process state diagram. Uh, I hope it was clear to you. Thanks for watching this video. See you in the next one.